Hi, Dr. P here to talk about sources of uncertainty in warfare and corresponding mechanisms in commercial games, not so much professional games, commercial games. So I'm listing sources of uncertainty in warfare and then looking at games, sometimes mostly tabletop games, to identify ways to model these uncertainties. Keep in mind also that morale plays a great part in warfare. Napoleon said the moral is to the physical is three is to one. And surprise is part of morale. Well, all this at rock bottom is about uncertainty. And of course, I may talk sometimes about surprise rather than uncertainty, although I have a separate screencast that's surprise in games. But keep in mind, surprise is about perception, and perception depends on what you think is happening. And the more uncertainty there is, the less likely you are to actually know what's happening. So where does real life uncertainty come from in warfare? Location. Where am I? Where are my units and my supplies? Where is the enemy? I'm going to go through each of these and then talk about each one in more detail. So the next one is orders. Do my orders reach my units? Do my commanders understand my orders? Do my commanders follow my orders? Then we have strength. How strong or capable are enemy units? And how strong or capable are my own units? Combat. Where are all kinds of chances involved? Do leaders become incapacitated? Are there breakdowns and many other factors than simple strength and especially morale? And finally, we have intention. What is the enemy trying to do? What do they want me to think they're doing? What do I want them to think I'm doing? So first we have location. Where am I? Where are my units and my supplies? If the units are not supplied, they're not going to be able to function very well. Where is the enemy? In the real world, in open country, unless you have good maps, it's easy to get lost. And of course, in earlier times than modern times, Frequently, there weren't maps at all of enemy lands. Units may move faster or slower than expected. That contributes a great deal to uncertainty. In games, this is modeled by what's generally called the fog of war, that you can't see farther than your units can. And even when they can see something, they may misidentify it or they may not report it to you, especially in naval situations. In tabletop games, this is often accomplished with blocks, blank on the opponent's side, descended from La Tac and Stratego. In video games, the nature or the natural thing is that things are hidden unless you tell the screen to show it to a player. So Fog of War is somewhat easier to arrange, considerably easier, I think. What about orders? Do my orders reach my units? Do my commanders understand my orders? Do my commanders follow my orders? And of course, we could ask the same thing about the enemy's orders. It seems to me this is rarely modeled in commercial games, perhaps more in computer games where the computer can implement the misunderstandings and the failures. And I think it's common in professional, which is to say military run games, because it's an important part of warfare. You also see it in team miniatures games where somebody is the commander and, and writes orders and sends them off to the other players and then they may not understand them or they may not follow them or they may just screw them up. What about strength? How strong or capable are my enemy units? And the same question can be asked about my units. When a unit doesn't have experience, the strength or the capability is even more uncertain. Some units may simply fail to perform to expectation. One division, say, may be much stronger than another psychologically or have a much better leader. Now, in war games, uncertain strength is rarely modeled. It can be done with a dice roll or the equivalent when the unit first acts. Until then, the unit is identified, but the strength is not determined. Or units can be placed upside down 
in a tabletop game and are not turned face up to reveal their strength until involved in combat. All the top mites of the unit might say is that it's an armored unit or a infantry unit or artillery. Combat is where the most chance is involved in typical games. And in some games, morale is reflected, especially games with miniature figures. But in many games, morale is just not figured or is rolled into everything else. In commercial war games, combat is the most common uncertainty. It's most often resolved using dice, possibly with a combat results table like the old original Avalon Hill games. There are other methods of resolving combat. Uh, one is to substitute numbered randomly drawn cards for dice when combat res resolution requires just one die. And so over the course of a considerable number of events, you can make sure each player is getting the same range of results because they have their own deck. You can also have deterministic combat where there's no chance involved. And that works in some games, especially when unit identities and strength are hidden from the enemy until the fight. Then the uncertainty comes from the hidden ID and hidden strength, not from the combat itself. Intention is the most slippery of all sources of surprise. Sun Tzu emphasizes intentions and consequent misdirection. What is the enemy trying to do? What do they want me to think they're doing? What do I want to make them think I'm doing? This is where Yomi comes in, which more or less means reading the mind and, or intentions of the enemy. Great generals usually have been very good at Yomi, and poor generals have not. In games, this proceeds naturally from the players when there's at least two sides, and more if there are more than two sides, you can try to read the mind of the other player, read their intentions. Adjudication methods can introduce uncertainty. Simultaneous movement, for example, as in the game Diplomacy, is a way to have uncertainty and possible surprise of intent. You're expecting a player to move one direction, he moves another direction. You're expecting a player to help you out, and instead he hinders you, and so forth. Committed intent is another method where players choose command cards simultaneously and then they execute them in initiative order. You can get, you certainly have uncertainty and you can get surprise again via intention in this situation. And that's especially true if players have to choose several cards in a row before any are revealed. I have one prototype where that's how I did things. Players would have to lay down six cards in order, and they'd turn them over one by one, and then execute them simultaneously, more or less. And the problem there is, if things went wrong, players got very frustrated, and modern gamers are not good at tolerating frustration. So the standard now in that game is, you play one card at a time, and the option is to lay down up to six at once. This has been a brief summary, of course, of something one could write a book about. In fact, Greg Kostikian has written a book about uncertainty in games. That's the title, which I have to admit I have but have not yet read. But I did read his very long essay that the book, I think, derives from, which was excellent. So if you want to know a lot about uncertainty in games, get that book and read it. Keep in mind in all this, Gamers who are interested in mastering games want to feel in control, and too much uncertainty undermines that feeling and can introduce a lot of frustration. That's why in a game that you're trying to sell to people, you may want to limit the uncertainty to one element. For example, I have a game system that uses blocks, but there are no dice in the combat because the blocks introduce sufficient uncertainty and there's even tension in the combat even though it's deterministic. It's quite interesting. 
So, while master gamers want control, war and games tend to be polar opposites. And I've talked about that in more in other videos. Thanks for listening.